Hi, I'm Kevin Tracy, and this week I thought it'd be fun to join a totally random art contest on YouTube. And there are actually quite a few. The problem is that most of them just suck. A lot of them had only like a six or seven second announcement with no details, and the art contest seemed to be put on by kids who are too lazy to learn how to draw their own original anime characters, and are just hoping that YouTube will fix their crappy characters so they can lift the art for their channel thumbnail. Anyway, after scrolling pretty far down the list, I found a channel called Shadow the Wolf. I'm not sure if the channel belongs to a wolf named Shadow or an anti-hero hedgehog shadowing a wolf for some reason. Most likely the former, but the latter would be kind of entertaining too. I'm guessing this is from a mobile game called Wildcraft, which I never heard of until today. And I don't really care because this art challenge is actually pretty interesting. This person designed a 3D wolf in this program, and it's wearing the skull of another freaking wolf as its mask. And that's pretty freaking awesome. And more importantly, it's wildly different and more original than anything the crappy artists looking for free channel art were doing. So, in honor of Shadow the Wolf, let's get drawing. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a full-time artist specializing in high-resolution pixel art. I draw a comic book series in MS Paint called The MS Paint Comic, which you can find on Amazon, and signed first editions are actually still available from ktracy.com, along with other merch and gear. So if you want to know why I'm drawing this in MS Paint, that's why. I also do traditional art, woodworking, and I share a lot of what I do with my subscribers here on YouTube. So if you find value in anything I'm doing, consider subscribing and joining our growing community. Okay, enough about me, let's talk about the art. I cut out about five hours of me trying to figure out how to draw a freaking wolf. It started with a blue skeleton that looked nothing like a wolf, and very slowly, I kept redrawing it in different colors, erasing the previous one until I had something that I thought kind of sort of resembled the wolf I wanted to draw. If I included that in this video, it would be like two thirds of the time lapse, burying the interesting stuff at the tail end of the video and speeding it up so fast that it would all just be a blur. I actually have a wolf as my main character, in Volume 4 of the MS Paint Comics, so I really do need to figure out how to do this more quickly. Anyway, I'm starting the video with this line art. I decided to use a 3 pixel thick outline for the wolf and a 2 pixel thick line on the inside to kind of make it look more like a stylized illustration. It's a technique I'm using for my next comic book and I'm really liking the way that it's turning out, so I thought it would look good here too, and I think it did. When doing this wolf, I knew that I wanted it to look illustrated, but still more detailed and lifelike than the 3D model would allow. So while I tried to follow the wolf's most prominent fur patterns, I took some liberties to make the fur look more wild and animated. In places where I needed more detail than three lines would allow, I opted to use either a two pixel thick line or to just draw in what I needed using the pencil tool. I knew as soon as I saw this wolf, that my drawing would have to feature the wolf doing something metal. You see, even though I've never played Wildcraft, I'm guessing it's meant to be like an animal version of Minecraft, a quote-unquote fun-for-all-ages gaming experience. Well, Shadow the Wolf put another wolf's skull on this wolf, so it seems to me that someone is obviously trying to push the boundaries of that. And as a former teenager who often had to use his imagination to make Nintendo 64 games more brutal, I really respect that. So I thought to myself, let's make this more metal by having it carry a, the severed leg of a gazelle. Because really, when I need inspiration for something brutal like this, there's no greater source than thinking back to my childhood dinners and watching the Discovery Channel in the 1990s. Huh. Oh my god. I just realized the Discovery Channel and the History Channel are to millennials what MTV is to us. At least you guys can cut the cord though. Back then it took two hours to download a single illegal MP3 from Napster. Focus Kevin, focus! All right. So I, I went back to Shadow the Wolf's art contest video and I was pleased to see that it actually provided a color palette with a second view of the wolf from the side. I would need the two views as a reference when drawing this wolf at this angle. The colors I'm guessing were provided to recreate the wolf in Wildcraft, but it works well enough for me recreating the wolf in MS Paint too. Oh my god. Waiting for downloads on dial-up is to my generation what walking to school barefoot uphill in the snow was to my parents. Okay, anyway, I decided to give the skull an earthy tone to make it stand out a bit more from the patch of white fur 
visible from under the mask. I also changed the hue of one of the wolf's colors to make it a bit more blue. For some reason, the color I selected had a warmer hue of gray when it was obviously meant to be a cooler hue of gray. So I didn't stick strictly to the hues in this palette, but I tried to stay as true to Shadow the Wolf's wolf as possible. Because I was limiting myself to just a few hours for this, I only put down two tones of shading for most of the wolf. However, when it came to the bloodied gazelle leg, I felt like more depth was needed to accentuate the details of the gore and imply the variations of color of the different parts of the inside of the leg. And kind of late in the process, I realized that this severed leg was awfully fleshy. A, a broken bone in there would be a really nice addition, I thought. Because there's so much nutrition in the bone marrow, I, it's my dog's favorite part of the bone, I drew the bone cracked open and scraped clean of the marrowy goodness. And this kind of also inspired the background. I knew I wanted to draw the wolf on the move, but if he ate the marrow first before carrying the severed limb further, it would almost imply that the wolf was embarking on a long adventure. To send that message home even further, I decided the background should show the wolf leaving one biome and entering another. So. Off in the distance are the trees of the forest where the wolf calls home, and underfoot is the beginning of a rocky, barren waste. So barren that the wolf has brought food because it knows that a meal is going to be really hard to come by. This should also imply the intelligence of the wolf, planning for this voyage before setting out on its obviously important mission. Well, let me know what you think. If you liked this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing. I post a new video every week. And if you despise this video, my art, or anything I said, let me know in the comments. Tell me why. I really do appreciate your feedback, even if you're being a jerk about it. And yeah, I admit, this kind of started off as a joke for me, but I got really excited about it as I was working on it, and I think it turned out pretty well. My pixel art prints can take weeks to complete, so rushing through another drawing in less than a day is actually a lot of fun for me. If you want to see the making of one of those more detailed prints, the video on the left is a time lapse of me creating the Ghostbusters print. And on the right is another speed drawing where I try to redraw one of Jazz's atrocious MS Paint creations in less than 30 minutes and kindly roast him in the process. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great week.